All right, we just talked about software scopes, the ones that are built into color. Yeah. And what we want to discuss right now is external scopes. And this is something that, as a colorist, I'm sure that you suggest that you have external scopes, right? All the time. I mean, any professional will have an external scope using on their system getting out, not only for color, but for Final Cut Pro and your playouts as well. You need to know what's going on. Sure. And it's not that the internal scopes are bad necessarily. They're very accurate. The color yes. scopes are accurate. But one thing that people might not know is that they're not full resolution. You're not getting the full resolution of the video image to the scope. When you're talking the cost of all of an external scope versus what we have in there, I think we have a real, real good comparison. Right. And the Apple Color folks really want to devote all that um, computer horsepower where you want it to making the controls interact smoothly, responsively to what you're doing instead of devoting all that computer horsepower to the scopes. It's right. just exactly. not worth the time. So what we're going to talk about is this Tektronix scope. And one of the great things that sets Tektronix apart is they have a number of patented displays that nobody else has. And there's also some other really great features of the scope. And that's what we're going to talk about next. So here we are. We've got a Tektronix WFM 8300. There's also another uh, less expensive version of this. It's a rasterizer. And a rasterizer is a scope that doesn't have the display. So instead of being able to see this display, it would just be like a, a one or two rack unit piece with no display. And of course, you use the display from a computer monitor and you've got a nice big display. That's a great way to, uh, one, save some money and two, really be able to see the images in a, in a very easy way. What I want to show you here is the presets because this is just a primo thing uh, here with this tech scope. The operation is very simple. There's a little preset button right here. And if I click on this preset button, what you get is uh, if you look along the bottom of the display, it says gamut quick view two up, gamut LQV four vectors, RGB plus LQV, waves, and general. Now the buttons that are below them still say waveform, vector, picked, audio, but when you're in this preset mode where the presets are along the bottom of the screen, these buttons just correspond to the words that are on the screen, not what the, uh, the buttons themselves say. So for example, if I hit the waveform button, what I'm gonna do is get the gamut preset that I've created. So I'm gonna try that. I'm just gonna hit waveform and all of a sudden, I get a preset that I have called gamut. And the reason why I called it that is because it's three different gamut displays. Um, and some of these, actually all of these, basically other than the vector scope image are exclusive to Tektronix. These are things that Tektronix has patented and they have a, a specific value to the user. Up at the top, you see a vector scope and it's very easy for us to call up that vector scope full frame if you want to. You press this one button, which corresponds, there's one, two, three, four, in kind of a little square, and that corresponds to these four quadrants of the display. So you press one and you get a little blue line around the vector scope. And if you wanna see that vector scope full, you just hit the full button and now you've got a full frame vector scope. If you wanna go back, just hit full again and you're back to the four, four up display. So we've got a vector scope here. In this quadrant, we've got a thing called a diamond display. This is showing you gamut. This is very important when you're trying to make sure that levels are legal, for example. And it can even help you a little bit with white balance. This may be a little bit foreign display to many of you, even the experienced colors, but I'll explain it pretty quickly. And that is the intersection at the middle of these two diamonds is black. So at the bottom of the top diamond, that's black. And at the top of the bottom diamond, that's black. Then white is all the way up at the top and all the way down at the bottom of this diamond. And then blue colors shift off to this side, red colors shift off to this side of this diamond, and actually green goes uh, the same direction on both diamonds. So you can tell that we have a very well-balanced uh, image here because the most of the trace is going up and down in the middle of the image. So this means this is a very nicely balanced image. And then you've got a lot of red over here to the side of the bottom diamond. And that is uh, showing us that the, the uh, image that we have up here is this Golden Gate Bridge image. And uh, obviously all that red is what you're seeing over here. The uh, image down in the bottom corner, quadrant three, this is called the spearhead display. I'm just gonna punch this up to full for now. The spearhead display is basically that diamond display folded over, uh, you fold it in half and you fold it over in half again and that's what you get. And you can actually see whether things are in or out of gamut. In other words, whether they're illegal. And this display is showing you if it's outside of this triangle, 
then you've got illegal levels. And you can see down here, we've got some of our blacks are illegal. And you can see up here in the brightest areas in our, in our chroma area, we've got some illegal levels here. There are also two small um, error messages. The red error messages down in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen are also telling us that we have an RGB gamut error and a Luma gamut error. And let's take care of those, Bob. First of all, let's go to broadcast safe. That's the simplest thing. If we turn broadcast safe on. Broadcast safe is on. And now you can look down in the bottom, the, the error messages showed yellow for a little heartbeat and then they disappeared. And that uh, means that Broadcast Safe actually took care of those errors just like you would expect they would. The entire trace is now inside this triangle. Let's go back to our four up display. The spearhead and the arrowhead are very similar. The arrowhead is showing you your uh, composite video signal and it lets you know whether you've got any uh, NTSC composite errors so that's your four gamut displays. Let's take a look at another preset. I'm going to go through these a little faster now because uh, these were some of the more complicated ones to explain. I'm going to come back over here to change my preset and just hit the preset button. And now you can see uh, quick view is next. So I'm going to hit the vector button, which is directly below quick view. And you'll see four new displays. And these are, I, I kind of think of the, this is a really good combination for a colorist. Don't you think, Bob? Oh, I think so. Very much so. Yeah, we've got our RGB uh, parade up in the top corner. We've got a vector scope. We've got an NTSC composite view of the, the um, waveform down in the bottom left-hand corner. And the right corner is just a simple uh, low-pass look at luminance. And so what that means is we're not looking at any chroma information in this bottom version. You see chroma in the other places, but you don't see chroma here. So this is purely giving you luma. And this is one of the great things about having an external scope and a, and a scope that's mm -hmm. as configurable as the Tektronix is that um, you can really see everything you need to see at one glance. Yeah, I mean, you it's very important. You want to go to monitor something on a scope. You don't want to have to keep going around pushing a bunch of buttons to get there. Right, so you can have a view like this, like the quick view, and you could customize this oh, God, to your yeah. own certain pref preferences. But also the other presets that you can get to are literally, you can see four different looks at another press of a button. Right. So it's not like you have to configure each time you wanna, you wanna see one of these looks, you can very quickly get to them. And um, I'll, let me show you some of these, uh, some more of these presets. We're gonna hit preset again, go to the next one, two up. Now I know the first time you and I saw this, we're like, that is primo, right? Yeah, basically, I like that. Isn't this cool? This is basically the waveform split over two different um, quadrants spread out. Basically, we zoomed in to the top half, 2x. You can kind of see there uh, at the, the bottom of the top waveform, it says V gain X 2.50. And the bottom one says the same thing. We zoomed into them and then just kind of put them on top of each other. So you're actually seeing the entire spread of the waveform monitor on one side and you're seeing the vector scope on the other side. You got some lines in between, but at least it gives you a really clean, really advanced kind of blown up look uh, at one shot. So that's another really good one for a colorist to use. I'm gonna hit the preset button again and we'll go to gamut LQV. Now, this is something that uh, Tektronix, when they told me about this LQV thing that they were developing, it really impressed me because for a colorist, this is primo information. I want to explain this just a little bit. Actually, I'm going to switch to a different preset so I can explain it a little better. I'm going to switch to uh, four vectors, my four vectors preset. So it looks like you almost have the four images. It's all the same. It's four vector scopes, right? And so you wonder what the difference is. Well, in the top right-hand corner, that is a standard vector scope. If you look at the uh, UI of color right now, it looks pretty much like the vector scope that's in color. Um, the difference with the other three vector scopes that are on the screen is that Tektronix allows you to see them what they call Luma qualified. What they're showing you is if you look real closely at the little letters that are up there, it says high from 766 and low down to 400. Basically, we're saying the top vector scope, all we're looking at is the highlights. So if you're trying to move the highlights around, then you can look at this Luma qualified vector where all you see is highlights and you're able to adjust it and just see the highlights in a vector scope. Underneath that is just the mid-ranges or mid-tones or gammas of your vector scope. That goes from 400 down to about 100 millivolts. And then on the far right side 
it, it's showing you the shadows in a vector scope. It's just from a high of 100, and we took it all the way down to the lowest you could get, not just ending it at zero, but actually going down into the illegal levels. The low is negative 51 or something like that. So um, basically, you've got one vector scope showing you the entire image, and then you've got a vector scope showing you the highs, mids, and lows. So that's pretty cool. And, and the only people that have this is Tektronix. And, and that's really a valuable thing for a colorist. I mean, you were pretty impressed with the first time you saw this. Oh, exactly. If I switch over to the pre primary in-room, I can actually, as I'm moving stuff around, I can, I can see exactly what I want. If I'm in the shadows, I can tweak the shadows to where I want. If I see some problems in the gammas, I know what scope to go to and find things. And the same thing for the gains. Right. It's yeah. awesome. And another thing that I want to point out here is in each one of these views, you can zoom in very quickly and easily just with a gain button. I've got two chosen. You can see the blue line that surrounds it. And I can hit gain, and now I've zoomed in 2x. If I want to zoom in more than 2, and then just to do that, to go in and out, all I have to do is a single button push. It's very simple. And if I want to go 5x or 10x, all I have to do is hold the gain button down for a couple of seconds, and I get this display. I can do it variably, where I can change any amount at all, or I can use the buttons up here at the top. There's a bunch of uh, little arrows around a selection button. I'm going to go down because we're in the variable gain there. I'm going to go down to gain settings. And I'm going to use the over button, the right button, to go over to 2x. And I can choose 1x, 2x, 5x, uh, whatever I want. And then if I leave it at 5x, the next time that, I'm, that I come back to that, as I punch this back and forth, now I'm punching back and forth between 1x and 5x instead of 1x and 2x. It's just that simple to, um, to record these and to save them. Let's take a, couple, a look at a couple of the other presets that I've got going on here. Once again, I just press the preset button. Gamut LQV. This is basically those same LQV high, middle, and low vector scopes plus the spearhead display. Preset. Four vectors. This is the one that we just looked at. Hit preset again. Here's a really good one, I think, for uh, color correction. Bob, what do you think of this? I call this RGB plus LQV. And what this gives you is, once again, highlight qualified vectors, gamma or middle qualified vectors, low qualified vectors in the bottom right-hand corner. And in the top right-hand corner, you've got your RGB. To me, that would be one of my favorites to use because I'm always monitoring the uh, parade. And then having the ability to, like you said, at a quick push of a button to zoom in to the individual quadrants like that is awesome. So if you're trying to balance your blacks, this is so simple from this display. You press the 4 button. That gets you down to the bottom quadrant. And remember, this is where the shadows are. You press the four button, you hit gain. And now you've zoomed in. And that can e easier for me to it's easier to, to It's easier to tweak see. your blacks that way. And it's very quick. And, and when you're trying to do hundreds of color corrections every day, these are the things you need to be able to do quickly. You don't want to be hunting around in settings and, and various things. You just want to be able to get to them. So let's take a look at the last couple of presets. Waves is a cool one. What do you think of this? This is a little bit hard to understand at first, but I tell you, it's very useful. Obviously, up in the top corner, the one that I've got the blue highlight around right now, that is your typical RGB. And if you want to gain it and zoom in, you can. Um, but there's your RGB. It, uh, underneath of it, it's a YRGB display of just luminance down at the bottom. And then the side, the two right-hand side displays, you're like, what the heck am I looking at? Well, if you look closely, I'm going to highlight the top one. Uh, this says video gain 5x, and the bottom one, same thing, the display below, it's 5x as well. This is an RGB parade waveform where you're only looking at the very lowest part and the very highest part. So if you're trying to tweak ranges and you're worried, geez, am I going over 100? Uh, where exactly is my black level? How close is it to the bottom? If you've got a little teeny display or you can't quite see it well enough, this display really lets you see into those shadows and into the highlights very well. Let's say we wanted to change one of these. For example, I'm going to show you the last one we haven't shown you is the general one, which is, for me, I press the I button here. This, I wouldn't really say this is a color correction version because we've got audio on there. You can actually feed audio through SDI or AES EBU and you can see all your audio levels if you want, uh, if you want to do that. But this is audio levels in the bottom right-hand corner, a vector scope, which is pretty typical for a colorist to want to look at in the top. Uh, 
YRGB in the top corner instead of just RGB, we've gone YRGB. And maybe that's confusing to you, so let's change that. So I'm going to punch the one button on the display here to get me up into that top corner um, quadrant. And we don't like uh, YRGB. We really prefer, Bob and I prefer RGB. Maybe you prefer YRGB. We're going to switch to RGB. I'm just going to hold the button, the waveform button down just for a couple of seconds, and that brings up the options for this display. From there, the, the arrows around the select button are going to get me up and down in this display. I'm going to stick with the parade style. We could also switch if we wanted to to overlay. But we're going to stick with parade. And so there's parade. Now we're going to go down. There's Y, R, G, B. Those are the different channels that we're asking to feed into this scope. And then we have a, a choice of filter. We can do flat or low pass, and that depends on whether you're seeing chroma, basically. Underneath that is centering the waveform. We're not going to really worry about that, but you can sometimes you can use the horizontal center to move your, your uh, waveform off center, and you can center your waveform. That's not that big of a deal. But down at the bottom is display mode. And we're going to just punch over to the side, and our choices are YPBPR, um, which is a very kind of difficult way to understand uh, a waveform monitor, but maybe you'll like it. You should check that out. There's YRGB, which is what we had, and RGB, and that's what Bob and I like. So we're going to stick with RGB, and uh, we can save that. So now we've changed the YRGB to RGB, and then down at the bottom, audio is not something that a, that a colorist needs to worry about, so I'm going to press the 4 button on the front of the display. That gets me audio. Uh, what do you want to see in that uh, the bottom display, Bob? Anything just, particular? Just give me an uh, overlay. An overlay. All yeah. right. So what we're going to do, that's a waveform display. So I'm going to choose waveform. And there's the SDI. You want SDI or do you want something else? SDI would be great. A Thank composite. you. Composite. So that's a composite composite waveform, and I can slide it one way or the other. And that's, that's basically that. And if we want to save this as a preset over this, uh, let's say um, before it said general and we didn't really like the fact that it had audio and we didn't really like the fact that it had YRGB, we wanted YRGB. If we want to save this, we hit preset. We hold down the general button and it says, do you want to save over your previous preset that you had? And we're just going to press the right arrow button at the top of the screen and then you can see on your display that says continue. We'll hit select. And now we've saved this, so from now on, instead of having the general have the audio in the bottom and a YRGB in the top, from now on it'll come up like this. So some really valuable things to be able to see. One of the cool things about these presets is Bob and I have saved all of our presets, the ones that I've been showing you, we've saved all of these onto the project files for this training. So definitely check those out. If you've got a tech scope or you're thinking about getting a tech scope, you can load our presets onto many of them. Not all of them, but most of the tech scopes you can load these onto. So that's a pretty good overview of this scope. We'll be doing a little bit more advanced work with the scopes in the advanced color training. So with that kind of customizability and ease of use, it's pretty obvious what the value of these scopes are.